G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today, what broke the fans, Mordheim. In the year 1999, a game was released, quite possibly one of my favourites, if not my absolute favourite. The game was Mordheim, and it was set in the year 1999 of the Empire of the Old World of Warhammer Fantasy. Get it? 1999, just like the year it was created in. The plot revolves around a comet which is made of warp stone, which crashes into the city of Mordheim. The city is considered to be somewhat of a den of depravity prior, and the common, well, it didn't really do much to improve things in this regard. The only thing left intact was the Sisters of Sigmar Fortress Monastery, due to the power of Sigmar shielding them. Soon, all manner of adventurers, treasure hunters, and more unseemly things are drawn to the city, intent on plundering the abandoned ruins for wealth and soon the warp stone. Warp stone was so prized because it was a magical element, able to give those who didn't have magical powers the ability to cast. For wizards, mages, and all kinds of spellcasters, it could allow them to concoct more powerful potions, spells, or charms. But for those who were foolish enough to handle the pure warp stone, it could have more dire consequences. The gameplay itself revolves around the quest to retrieve Warpstone, and the campaign you partake in, well, it centers around achieving this goal. The principal combatants of Mordheim are the Warbands, and for those of you who are familiar with uh, Necromunda, Kill Team, this sort of thing, it will sound very familiar. You start with 500 gold crowns, the basic currency with which to build and recruit your Warband. The Warbands themselves, well, they consist of uh, heroes and henchmen, and they come with allocated experience slots. As these uh, heroes and henchmen improve, they will gain additional experience, additional skills, stats, etc. You also equip your warband with your starting currency, and over the course of playing the game, you'll gain experience on your individual warband members, adding new recruits, losing beloved characters, and characters who've been with you from the start may suffer things and all the trials and tribulations that go along with that. The gameplay is incredibly addictive and I for one was drawn in hook, line and sinker. Now the initial game released centered around a few warbands, the Undead, Witch Hunters, Sisters of Sigmar, Skaven, The Possessed and lastly Mercenaries, which were the Empire default faction. You basically had three sub-factions of the mercenaries to pick from based on their region of the Empire. Reichland, which gained leadership aura buffs and better marksmen. Middenheim had strength four champions and captains, which is actually kind of a big deal in a game where minus one armor save is important. And of course Marienburg, who is probably the most popular of the three because they started off with 100 additional gold crowns or 20% additional in one-off matches. Now the units you took in the warband had minimum and maximums. Usually the warband leader has to be a specific hero which must be taken. After this, you basically go for one more hero and then fill out the roster with henchmen and war gear. The old and incredibly dodgy tactic was for Skaven players to simply spam the cheapest henchmen they could with slings and throw 15 or so bodies at other warbands who started with perhaps five or six models. Many a Skaven player probably copped a well-deserved beating in the car park after the game for that cheesy move. This was of course rectified in later rules for the game, but on release let's just say it was a little bit rough. So this initial warband roster, which contained miniatures like you're seeing right now on the screen, well this was soon supplemented by, well in the basic book, additional hired swords. Now hired swords and mercenaries, well they're available to most warbands. And for bonus fluff, some, like the Elf Ranger or the Dwarf Slayer, could be hired by a warband, but due to hating one another, they would uh, incur a penalty in order for you to uh, justify them hanging around in the same warband. You had to pay double upkeep for both the Elf and the Dwarf if they're in a warband with one another. It's thematic and it's fun. Of course, as I'm previewing here, we had Dramatis Personae, and these were the next tier up of High Swords. These are named characters, and they would only be played under exceptional circumstances. These characters, whilst strong, were prohibitively expensive, 
costing as much perhaps as the entire warband in upkeep. Now the core game was very well received by the community and grew a strong following. It had a supplemental magazine called the Town Crier. Now the Town Crier when it was released, well, it brought along not just additional warbands, it would bring along additional scenarios uh, and different rules for different areas that you could fight in, such as Mordheim games centered around Camry or Lustria. Some of the additional warbands included, but aren't limited to, the Dark Elf Corsairs, the High Elf Shadow Warriors, Beastmen, Dwarf Treasure Hunters, Lizardmen, and of course the Orcs. I still have my copy of the Best of Town Crier with the Orcs and Dwarf Warbands. And for those who remember these awesome magazines, I always like to point people in the direction of the obituary section at the end of each print, because some of them are pretty funny. Anyway, by the end of 2004, development had basically essentially ceased to exist. For some time after though, developers would actually release extra rules or clarifications and FAQs of their own, and they did this on their own back outside the official Games Workshop popline, uh, which was just for them to give back to the community, which I think is great. I actually really love and respect that. The game finally disappeared sadly from Games Workshop web stores in 2010. So what was the legacy of Mordheim? Well, much like Necromunda, it explored a facet of just one part of the universe within which it existed. It took place 500 years before Warhammer Fantasy Battles, before even the last great chaos incursion, and was indeed finally put to the sword and cleaned by Magnus, the Emperor of the Empire it would soon become. Mordheim wasn't just a skirmish game of fantasy. It was a game where you controlled a character, and that character grew into what your adventures dictated. Shot in the leg, he might gain a limp, or maybe he killed that young Von Karstein vampire, and he himself became a hero of renown. Maybe down the way he became a great general within the Empire, who knows? The game was open-ended, and I loved that. It was fully customizable and encouraged you to build and convert your own force up to best represent you. It also explored factions which you may have never thought of in Warhammer Fantasy. Hammer-wielding nuns with attitude, sign me up, come on. Mordheim has since seen a small PC revival with the Mordheim game, but it's definitely a pale shadow of the classic tabletop. The community still exists for Mordheim on the tabletop too, and to this day it's a better game than Warcry or Underworlds, but then of course, it's because they're fundamentally different games. Those games are all about the right cards and the right warband at the right time, whereas Mordheim is the polar opposite, free-flowing with no two games ever played at the same time, and played out the same way. Mordheim and perhaps Battlefleet Gothic are the two specialist games I most wanted to see re-released by Games Workshop, and sadly, they're focusing on a second edition of Blood Bowl, re-releases for Lord of the Rings, and of course games like Aeronautica. Now, this is not to say that I don't welcome other games, but come on, Mordheim and Battlefleet Gothic were probably two of the biggest specialist games ever, with only, what, Blood Bowl, Necromunda, and Epic to rival them? Titanicus, Aeronautica, Warmaster, and especially Man of War were the more niche games, so it's surprising to see a couple of those coming back first. Anyway, download yourself a copy of Mordheim, it's free, because when Games Workshop decided they were done with it, they released all of the rules for the game for free. Play it with your local gang group, you may be pleasantly surprised, and if you're really keen on a particular Age of Sigma range, I dare say the Mordheim community has probably created rules for those warbands too. Also, it's gorgeous, did I mention that? Seriously, just look at some of the art in this video. Anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. Short, sharp, sweet. It's very hard with specialist games to do long, what broke the fans videos. You can't give them the half an hour that you would to a codex like, say, The Elder. Instead, what I want to do is just bring awareness of what the game was to people. Maybe some people might check it out because of that. Also, for fun in the comments below, see if you can tell me what war bands I played because I know obviously what warbands I played, but I'm interested to see what you guys will pick that I played. Anyway, back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching, and this was Mordheim. I'll see you all next time.